Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily edit text and images in your live website using in-browser editing. For this example, I'm going to use my own website. If you want to try this yourself, check with your website designer to confirm your site has been created using Adobe Muse and has been enabled for in-browser editing. You'll also want to make sure you have a specific FTP login and password for your site. So let's start by taking a look at the live site. So here we are on Katie's Bakery Cafe website. This is a small bakery cafe. And let's just assume for a moment that on the bakery team, I'm responsible for updating the website. I'm one of the bakers, and I keep the site up and running. So my responsibility is to showcase promotions on the landing page here. There's also a menu, and we like to keep the menu up to date with seasonal specials and pricing for items and ingredients around that. So those are the two areas I'm going to focus on editing. Now that I'm ready to make edits to this live site, what I want to do is point my web browser to inbrowserediting.adobe.com. And I'm going to be presented with a login page here. If I want to be lazy, I can go to the live site, and I'm just going to copy that URL, katiesbakerycafe.com, copy it to the clipboard, and I'll paste it here into the in-browser editing interface. So in-browser editing is now asking me for specific FTP details. These will be the credentials that were used to originally publish the site up to my hosting platform. So I have those. I'll go ahead and enter my username and password. And I'll go ahead and click the Sign In button. Now in browser editing has brought me into a window here. I can tell that I'm in in browser editing by this bar up at the top. And the first thing I notice is I've got a drop down here that allows me to switch between layouts for the site design. So if my site designer originally went and created a phone, tablet, or desktop design, I can access each of those specific layouts here. For now, we're going to stick with desktop. And as I roll over items, you'll see that I have either the ability to click to navigate around the site or to actually click and edit. So I could click here on the logo or click to navigate to other pages. But as I roll down, notice as I roll over some text here, Welcome to Katie's Cafe, it's highlighted, and I have the ability to edit that text. If I roll to the second section here, I'm going to go ahead and click either in that field or on the Edit button, which brings up the Edit Content little panel here. So the panel, although the styling is not apparent in this window, it's going to be retained. I can come in and change this to, say, a small chain of fabulous cafes in San Francisco. When I click Update, notice that the word fabulous is added, but it also has retained the styling for that container. I'm going to come on down to this delicious home baking section, and I want to change both the image and the text there. So what I'll do is roll over the text that I want to edit. I'll go a little higher so you can see the Edit button. And I'm going to click that Edit button and bring up that Edit Content dialog box. Now I've gone ahead and prepared the text that I want to paste into this container. So I'm going to tab over to that little text area. I'm going to select the headline, Come Celebrate the Harvest. And I'll go ahead and copy that on the clipboard. When I come into in-browser editing, one trick to make sure that you retain the styling is to kind of leave a little bit behind here. So I like to select almost all of it and paste that styling. And then I'll just hit the Delete key to backspace so I know that that's retained. Let's do that again with the block of text here. So I'm going to select it and copy that onto the clipboard. Come on into my Edit window and grab everything but the letter B there, paste it, and then I'll hit that backspace key. When I click Update, notice that the styling was retained. So come celebrate the harvest is in the proper typeface, and my text is there as well. All right, so that's good for the text part, but I want to also change out the image that I have here. So I'm going to roll over that image and click on the Edit button, or just click on the container. In the Edit Image dialog, I have the choice of either editing from images that may already have been uploaded to the site, or any Im image that I might have on my own local computer. Now my site designer has already gone in and uploaded some different images that I can work with. I'm going to go ahead and rely on those. But I could just click on the From My Computer button here 
and browse for something I might have taken with my phone, for example, or that I might have on my computer. I'll go ahead and select that From Site area, and I'm going to scroll on down. There's a nice shot of waffles in here that I want to use. So I'm going to click on that image. Notice that I can also define a tooltip. This is great for search engine optimization and also for people that are visually impaired. So when they roll over that image, they'll know what they're looking at. So I could write a description of the waffles. For now, I'll leave that blank and click Update. So now I'm ready to actually update the live site. Notice I've got the Publish button and Discard Changes. I'll go ahead and click on Publish. In-browser editing is going to update the live instance of the site. There you go, the changes were successfully saved. If I switch back to the Katie's back Bakery Cafe and go ahead and reload the design, as I scroll down, I'll notice it's got the fabulous cafe change here. There's my waffles and come celebrate the harvest. So all those changes have been retained. Now the next time my web designer opens up Muse and wants to make changes, let's say I call them up and want to add a catering section to my website, the web designer doesn't have to worry that they'll overwrite any changes that I've made because all of the changes in the browser that I've made will be downloaded back into Muse the next time that that designer opens up the application. I encourage you to give in-browser editing a try. Thank you.